So the next step, once you get to this, is we've actually, as we did with the Venus, as we did with the Earth, this just primed the cube for a layer by layer solve. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this as my bottom layer. And the reason that I'm going to do that, in my case it's blue, but you want one where the bottom layer is bandaged and the top layer is non-bandaged. And that's because I want to have two bandaged layers sitting here on the side, easily contained. Because in order to put the corner pieces in my first layer, I must only move the non-bandaged side. So I can basically get everything I want if I have these non-bandaged sides at, at my disposal. So as an example, here's a blue, orange, and white. So I actually want this to come up here. So I'm going to do that by moving the non-banded side here. So just wheel this in place there. No problems. And you can see that I have not destroyed my centers when I do that. To have moved the banded side would mean potentially destroying the centers. So here's another one. This one is actually just going to go up here. So, so far it's been easy. I'm just going to move it here, across, and up. All right, what about this one? This is orange, so this is going to come in over here. And again, just move it from the non-banded side. So I'm not going to do it like this. I'm going to come across and like this. So, so far, now I just have one more. i got to move this down, and I'm not going to move it from here. I'm going to move it from here. So we'll just go down, across, and up. Move it here, across, and up. Now, I'm not getting into specifics of what I did because... I think you pretty much have the picture. So we've got our first layer. Now we need to reconstitute our second layer. And you may think I just undid all that good that I did before, but I actually didn't. As long as I've got these centers where they need to be, we're fine. Now before proceeding in terms of reconstituting the middle layer, there's two rules of thumb and rules of engagement that we must have. First off, we're going to be wheeling it in by the familiar algorithm to do that. That's uh, what we use for the Rubik's Cube to get this over here. In order to do that, the first criteria that has to be met is all of these inner edges must be in place. And uh, you're going to see why that's an important distinction to make. The other thing that has to happen is these must be the same color. So the inner and outer must be the same. So we have to wheel that around to do that. Once you have those criteria, you can, with reckless abandon, put them into place, bandaged or non-bandaged. So here's an example of something that fulfills all the criteria. All these inner edges are in place, and this is one solid color. So as such, I can just wheel this from here to here. So, just by way of example, so you can see we've carried that middle here, and that's in place. All right, and what else? Well, how about this? Well, this fulfills one of our criteria, right? So I can move this here and wheel this over here with, well, without any problems, right? Wrong, because if you notice, this yellow, and this is white, this is orange and this is red. So we don't have these in the proper configuration. If you were to do this, you get very frustrated and angry because all your middles will be mixed up. So what we need to do is we need to rotate these around. And to do that, you guessed it, we go from our, um, just to the side of our banded side like we've seen before and then do that rotational middle algorithm in order to rotate these around. So I'm going to put my white one in here and do that until I have an orange one here. So this is coming back to haunt us. And there's the orange, there's the red, there's the yellow. Now we've got all criteria met and we can wheel this into here. Get used to checking yourself because I'm telling you, you're going to make the mistake and you're going to have to go back a couple steps to reconstitute what you just did. So, with all the faith that comes in the method, there it is. All right, next step, let's find another non-green. Well, how about this? So red and white. But before we do that, let's check ourselves. This is up. We have, to re -get, we have to reconstitute this. We have to put this back into place. So we're going to go to the side, and we're going to go ahead and get this back. I'll do this until the orange comes. Not yet. And there it is. This isn't right, so I'm going to move this in. And the one that's just in front of the orange is red, so I'm going to do that algorithm. Um, this will be fixed where I'm putting it, all of these inner edges will rotate. And there it is. Move it back, and we're fine. Now we can proceed. So what I want to do is I need to 
put this in where a white one is. In other words, I want it to join here. So to do that, I'm going to do that same algorithm, but this time at a bandage side. Because when I do that, the centers, inner centers won't move, but the outer centers will rotate, and I'll do that until this meets the white one. So, again, inner centers didn't move, but here it is. This rotated right into it. And you just have to keep doing that. I, I think I kind of got lucky in terms of the configuration, but that's you just have to maintain those criteria. So now we can comfortably wheel this into this area over here. And there it is. We've got one more here, and it's right there. Right, so we can wheel this in right. Wrong. This is in the wrong place. So we go right to the side of a bandaged cube, put this in here, and do our algorithm until we get our red here. There it is. There it is. There it is. So now we can do it. All right, so now we've reconstituted our middle layer. Our last layer is we have to get the cross, so we have to flip all these outer edge greens up, and that's done by our usual algorithm that you did with a Rubik's Cube. Bear in mind you want to do it on a bandaged side. But before that, let's take a look at our middle edges. That's good, not good, not good. So before we do that, let's get it back. Again, this is the danger of not checking yourself because you will get frustrated if you find it not working. Believe me, I know, because I was. Anyway, not yet here. Red, yellow, Oop, not the orange, so I'm gonna flip this here until I get orange next to it. There it is, flip it back. Okay, now we're cool, now we're okay. So go to a bandage side and let's get our cross. Well, here's a line, I, I gotta move it over here to make the line across here. Then we do our F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. Oh, algorithms, what can't you do? There's our cross over here. And now it's just a matter of getting these in place, but look how lucky we got. It just happened to be in place. Now, every type of scenario that you're going to get of these not being in place, we've already gone over. Um, but we'll go over a couple of situations um, in terms of what happens when you get parity. We, but all you're going to be using is the middle switching algorithm and the, um, ad uh, the adjacent middle swapping and the opposite middle swapping. Bearing in mind that if you have the, a certain parity, you need to go down to a banded side, like if this were if this were yellow and this were white, you need to go down here and solve it that way. But we've been through this before. So the next step to solve our outer shell is to put these corner pieces in place. Nothing new under the sun here. See what's in the right place. Yeah, this one is in, not in the right place. So we'll just do a little seeking here. Anything in the right place here? This is in the right place. Right place, right place. Okay, so they're all in the right place. You just have to wheel these in with the technique you all know so well. The technique that I find almost magical in how it works. Something that I can never really wrap my brain around, but just have the faith that it works. And we have ourselves the outer shell. 